everyone uh, hope you enjoyed last video we talked about what is remote sensing what are the advantages and disadvantages of remote sensing and also uh, bit history about remote sensing and we look deeper into the process and find the four basic elements of remote sensing then uh, now today we're going to focus about uh, re- electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic spectrum so Electromagnetic radiation can be simply defined as the carrier of electromagnetic energy uh, by transmitting uh, the oscillations of electromagnetic field uh, simply through space. So this is uh, also can be considered as a transverse wave with an electron and magnetic field. So there has to be both electronic electro electric and magnetic fields to consider when we when it comes to electromagnetic radiation so that that can be said as emr here short version when also when it comes to electromagnetic ra- radiation they uh, there are four elements of electromagnetic radiation but there are two uh, must most important characteristics wavelength and frequency as you see in this graph uh, wavelength and frequency lambda is for wavelength and frequency can be defined uh, interpreted from form of f and also i uh, told you earlier there are four elements so also there's uh, frequency or wavelength for sure that's one element so and other three are one is amplitude the amplitude of this wave and the transmission direction you know this uh, wave uh, di- transmitted from one direction to another so it has uh, one frame of di- to the other so this surely has a uh, transmission direction and also the po- polarization plane polarization plane or plane of polarization so those are the four elements of uh, electromagnetic radiation i would like to if you want me to repeat again frequency or wavelength uh, and direction of transmission and also polarization plane and the amplitude those are the four elements of electromagnetic radiation and also these elements helps us to uh, define the characteristic of a uh, remote sensing de- image characteristics of remote sensing data uh, of an image uh, like uh, colors tones or geometric shapes of objects so this can be defined uh, with these two these four correct charac- elements of electromagnetic radiation so wavelength can be defined as the length of one wave cycle which can be measured as distance between sub- successive wave crest it uh, defined from uh, sim- symbolized by using lambda measured in si unit meters you know this stuff i would like to repeat again and again and frequency refers to number of cycles of a wave passing in a fixed point uh, for per unit time and frequency measured in hertz equivalent to one cycle per second and electromagnetic energy modulated into waves wave motion and particle motion and here we focus wave motion so electromagnetic radiation can be considered as a transverse wave with an electric field and a magnetic field of course emr is a carrier of electromagnetic energy by transmitting uh, oscillations of electromagnetic field through space electromagnetic radiation is considered can be considered of course uh, as a transverse wave with uh, both of these uh, fields electromagnetic electric and magnetic field 
uh, these two fields of course located in right angle to each other uh, perpendicular to each other the plane of electric field is uh, the plane of polarization one of the uh, four elements of uh, EMR uh, it is vastly used in microwave remote sensing we will explain in future so this is a basic equation you know c equal lambda v v here mu lambda uh, not mu lambda so mu is frequency lambda is wavelength c is the velocity of electromagnetic energy this shows this proves this equation as you see when uh, lambda is comes to a small uh, value frequency comes to maximum so it means shorter wavelengths has higher spectral frequency here we show the wave motion uh, wave represents group of particles of course with the same frequency all those the particles should have frame frequency same frequency um, altogether they have different frequencies and magnitude as you see and also as the according to the uh, graph given below this one uh, there's an electronic component and a magnetic component the amplitude reflects the level of electromagnetic energy as you see in the second graph and this is something let's go a little bit further according to qu quantum theory emr can be treated as photons of quantum the amount of energy held by a photon of a specific wavelength is given by a following equation e equal h mu mu of course c divided by lambda so here h is plus constant you know these things chemistry you physics you need this equation Planck equation the longer length wavelength involved the lower its energy content and also when it comes to the most energetic radiator waves it's always about gamma because its wavelength is about uh, one nanometer I guess it's more difficult to measure the electric energy emitted in longer wavelength than a shorter wavelength then we come to electromagnetic spectrum the total range of wavelength is commonly reflected as to reflect to refer to as electromagnetic spectrum in other words this ranges from the shorter wavelengths to the longer wavelengths shorter wavelengths means including gamma and x-rays of course a longer wavelengths you know microwaves and radio waves and there are several regions of this spectra which are useful in remote sensing as you see ultraviolet or uv visible infrared microwave the electromagnetic division of the spectral wavelength is based on devices which can be used to observe particular types of energy such as thermal short wave infrared microwave energy let's go for it any matter with a body temperature greater than zero kelvin emits electromagnetic energy simple physics therefore it has a spectrum different chemical chemical elements have different spectra they absorb and reflect spectral energy differently and also different elements are combined to form compound each compound has a unique spectrum due to its unique molecular structure basis for remote sensing is discriminating one matter from the others then spectrum is of a material is like the fingerprint of human being so this is 
here you see electromagnetic spectra gamma x-ray uv from shorter wavelengths to longer wavelengths and also visible range you know cover range of approximately 0.4 micrometers to 0.7 micrometers yeah let's talk about gamma here a bit uh, this portion of spectrum has the uh, you know uv this portion of spectrum has the shortest wavelength I mean considering about UV visible infrared and microwave so if you pay attention towards these four uh, things these four parts of this electromagnetic spectrum and when it comes to visible uh, visible uh, range the light of our eyes can detect the part of visible spectrum for sure a lot of radiation around us which is invisible to our eyes but uh, this can be detected by other remote sensing instruments and used to which are used to our advantages the visible wavelengths cover from 0.4 micrometers to 0.7 micrometers approximately and longer visible wavelength is red and shortest is violet longest is red shortest is violet and when it comes to IR infrared this is the this covers wavelength from region from 0.7 micrometers to 100 micrometers uh, more than 100 times wide as visible portion infrared and infrared can be divided into five categories near infrared short wave infrared I would like if you to, to, uh, I would say again there are five categories in uh, infrared five if you want to note down I say again near infrared short wave infrared intermediate infrared terminal infrared and far infrared here near infrared is uh, within the wavelength range of 0.7 to 1.3 and short wave of course from 1.3 to 3 micrometers and 3 to 8 intermediate infrared and thermal infrared is from 8 to 40 and uh, far infrared of course 40 to 140 micrometers to 1 millimeter so there are five uh, divisions of infrared portion near infrared short wave infrared intermediate infrared thermal infrared and far infrared so near infrared is from 0.7 micrometers to 1.3 micrometers and 1.3 to 3 is short wave 3 to 8 is intermediate 8 to 14 is thermal and 14 to 1 millimeter 1 millimeter is far infrared then we see microwave the portion of this spectrum of more recent interest to remote sensing is the microwave region from about one millimeter to one meter this covers longest wavelengths used in remote sensing so there are uh, eight bands in a microwave region it is divided into eight bands uh, P band, L band, S band, C band, X band, K band, K U band, and K A band. So there are different type frequencies and different wavelengths. So all I would want to mention it here. Uh, those are not uh, so such important things here. Just uh, have that in mind. So electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, 
as I told you earlier, a spectral range of near infrared and the short wave infrared is sometimes called the reflected infrared 0.7 to 3 micrometers wavelength range because the range is more influenced by solar reflection rather than the emission from the ground surface and also in thermal infrared region emission of the ground surface dominates radiant energy with little influence from solar refraction so I explain those things when I show you the electromagnetic spectra and here so you can see visible range according to RGB values and types of remote sensing respect to wavelengths there are three visible and reflective infrared remote sensing means optical remote sensing of course and thermal remote sensing and also microwave remote sensing and when it comes to these types of remote sensing here you say let's first take about uh, visible and optical remote sensing there's a source there's a sensor and radiation source is sun always the sun when it comes to uh, with optical remote sensing but the ob object is of course the surface that reflect the, if we call reflectance and here we use say the reflectant radiance how uh, spectral radiance is the reflected radiant so it, it varies with the wavelength when uh, comes to thermal remote sensing uh, radiation source is the object simply the object then we define thermal radiation as the object uh, its uh, temperature or em emissivity uh, thermal radiation which comes through the object is the object here when we, so source is the object and we take to the sensor sensor is directed towards the thermal radiation of the object and emitted radiance can be varied in similar way of the reflected radiance uh, accord with the wavelength and also comes to microwave remote sensing the radiation source can be object or a radar the object can be a microwave radiation or backscattering coefficient so like that here you see electromagnetic spectrum varies with the through the according to wavelength so EMR is used in remote sensing and there are uh, Made three main models of uh, the ways of EMR is used in remote sensing. One is uh, remote sensing devices detect EMR from EMR reflected from a surface and emitted. Another thing is detect EMR emitted by Earth itself. Uh, these two categories belong to passive remote sensing and remote sensing devices generate their own EMR so of course you know when it comes to in, uh, generate their own EMR it's always about active remote sensing and also EM radiation interacts with atmosphere the most important source of energy sun of course before the sun's radiation reaches Earth's 
surface it has to travel through some distance of the Earth's atmosphere. The composition of atmosphere is this important in remote sensing because EMR must pass through it in order to reach Earth's surface. It's a composition of a atmosphere where these all particles interact with electromagnetic radiation and after that we comes to uh, interactions between particles and this uh, electromagnetic radiation so we will discuss those things in next video so today we discuss about uh, basically about electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic spectrum and also when it comes to electromagnetic spectrum we divide uh, remote sensing into three categories based on uh, electromagnetic radiation uh, optical thermal and microwave so we discuss some basic differences between these two uh, types and hope to continue from these two interactions these three types of inter interaction refraction absorption and scattering which happen between emr and particles of uh, atmosphere in next uh, video so hope you learned something from today's video as well as the last video so leave your comment and subscribe and share with the others uh, with people who are interested so have a nice day